Coming up on NFL Prime Time, rain, not snow, plays a part in this first day of December. Whether affecting play or giving a bad hair day, Mother Nature was there. The pack was back on the frozen tundra. The Panthers look to zero in against the Bucs. Can the Eagles get back on track and hold on against the Giants? The Saints hope to bounce on the fact the Rams will turn it over. Alexander and the Ravens look to catch the Steelers off guard. Will Jimmy and the Fish face a year without the playoffs? Can an unfamiliar face shine in an AFC East battle? While the Broncos look to familiar faces to push past the Hawks. Will this George be curious or ferocious against the Jets? Time to get fired up with this close to NFL Prime Time. Again, everybody, I'm Chris Berman. Welcome to week 14 of NFL Prime Time. Maybe it was the weather, maybe it was all the leftovers coming out of the fridge. Not a, a scintillating day of football. Some of the teams turned in some good performances. We will show you all of those to help me dole out the leftovers. Tom Jackson and the judge. Bill Pito passed the cranberry sauce. <laughs> I had it all. Oh, man, you too, the snack run, huh? <laughs> First, that's called a pause. Let's uh, let you get you caught up on the late games around the NFL. Oakland is shutting out Dan Marino and the Miami Dolphins, although the Dolphins are deep, but it uh, looks like uh, too late. About three minutes to go, the Raiders lead Miami 17 nothing. Cole four with a 38-yard field goal to give them the three-score bulge. The Denver Broncos look like they will sew up everything, home field through the playoffs, and it's only the first day of December. They're all over the Seahawks at the two-minute warning at mile high, 34-7. to John Elway now out of the game. St. Louis, who looks like they will win their first road win of the season. It, they have done it. It's a final. They beat New Orleans 26-10. to Rick Venturi, now 2-46-1, as a head coach in the pros and in college. And the Jets, wait till we tell you this story. Quarterback hurt in the parking lot on the way into the game, just about. Neil O'Donnell out, Jets out. Houston 35, and the Jets 10, and that is at the two-minute warning. Well... The best game on paper is our game here on ESPN. Two teams with winning records, playoff hopefuls in the AFC. The New England Patriots at 8-4, and four, the San Diego Chargers at 7-5. and five. When they look good, they look really good. When they look bad, they look really bad. Tonight, though, they know it's a crucial game. Mike Patrick, Joe Theismann, and Mark Malone on the call. Mark Malone is a preview. All right, thanks, Boomer, and welcome to Jack Murphy Stadium, where a sold-out crowd will be part of a postseason atmosphere here tonight as New England and San Diego try to position themselves for a final run to the playoffs. New England is in the driver's seat for an AFC wild card berth, and with Buffalo's loss earlier this afternoon, they can take control of the AFC East outright. San Diego, on the other hand, has a tougher road to the playoffs. Their remaining schedule at Pittsburgh, at Chicago, and home versus Denver is the toughest in the league, making tonight's game even more critical. We have to go out there and win every game and not even worry about what, what kind of favors we're going to get from other teams. So this is definitely a crucial game of our season. It could be the end or the start. I think it's real important for us tonight to take care of business at home. Uh, last time we played a home game, we didn't take care of our business, and that was one of our big goals at the beginning of the year was to take care of business at home. Uh, we kind of kind of got a little few boos last time we played at home from our own fans, so it's important for us to come out and play well and win this game. On the injury front, New England gets back starting corner Ty Law from a knee injury. It'll be the first time since October 6th that New England has put their entire starting secondary on the field. For San Diego Boomer, corner punt returner Darian Gordon has been bothered by back spasms. Willie Clark will start in his place, but Gordon is expected to see some playing time. All right, Mark, thank you. So uh, it's the Chargers and the Patriots. They don't meet that often. The last time they played at the Murph was 1977. It wasn't called the Murph. We'll have it for you at the top of the hour after NFL Prime Time. When we roll on, we got a lot to show you, including two teams that know how to play some defense, one a little better than others, the Panthers against the Bucks, And Antonio Freeman back. Could he help the Packers get back on track against the Bears? Prime Monday gets you set for the Niners and the Falcons at 7.30 Eastern time on Monday. Mike and the gang, 7.30 Eastern. Backstage, we go with Chris Dolman. And then on ABC's Monday Night Football, it's the 49ers at the Atlanta Falcons. Falcons upset the Niners last year in this building. Can they do it again? That's on ABC at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain Time. And Tom, that's four in Hawaii. When we return, plenty coming up. Bengals and Jaguars. We told you this game would be wild on Countdown. It was. 
Bucks and Panthers. Told you points would be tough to come by. They were. They were. To update you on the game going on in Oakland, Dolphins have scored to avert the shutout Marino to Randall Hill, but the Raiders got the onside kick to so that 17-7 Raiders just before the two-minute warning. I'd like to welcome those of you that have watched the Denver Broncos clinch everything uh, in the AFC as far as home field advantage is concerned. They beat the Seahawks 34-7. And also a final, uh, I'd like to welcome the few of you that hung with the Oilers and the Jets as the Oilers beat the Jets by the count of 35-10 to 10 at the, in front of a throng at the Meadowlands. Wow, the judge, Bill Pito, with us now. Billy, uh, really going in, he thought one of the most exciting games during the day would be Cincinnati-Jacksonville. Two exciting quarterbacks, team score points. We weren't disappointed. Seems like every week Jacksonville in an exciting yes. game. It's a playoff game in a sense to decide which team will still have a slight chance of making the playoffs, both Jacksonville and Cincy 5-7. and seven. The Jags' record could be a lot better in five of their losses. They missed chances to either win or tie the game in the final three minutes. Bengals' record could be a lot worse, but Bruce Coslett has led Cincy to a 4-1 record since taking over for David Shula. Weather a factor. Dicey. Lee Johnson, whoops. Jimmy Smith, whoops. Scoreless first. Doug Pelfrey, the field goal attempt. Blocked by Clyde Simmons. It's scooped up by Mickey Washington. And there he goes. Back the other way. 63 yards. And the Jaguars are up by the score of 7-0. Bengals down. 10-zip. First quarter. Third and one. Jeff Blake. Play action. Great play. Carl Pickens. Fred. Golden State, Cincinnati, Ohio. Touchdown, Cincinnati down 10-7. Yeah, and you look at the play fake here, Billy. Look at the defensive. The linebackers are up in the line of scrimmage. Pretty easy throw and catch for Blake and Pickens. We're now in the second quarter. Blake, who threw for 313 yards, hits Darnay Scott over the middle. And Scott has got it down the sidelines. He goes deep into Jacksonville territory. And away from the play, Tony Bracken's a personal foul on Blake. That would move the ball down to the Jacksonville nine. So first and goal, Blake again to Pickens, who caught seven passes. Touchdown, Bengals up 17-13. Third quarter now, Mark Brunel is in trouble. Rolling, 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 takes a terrible shot, gets it off anyway. Keenan McCardle, touchdown. After making the two-point conversion, Jags up 27-20. Tommy Brunel, a fantastic yeah, effort. Great courage by Brunel. You watch him hang in the pocket, deliver this ball as he's getting hit. Fourth quarter. Off Jimmy Smith, off Jimmy Spencer, back to Smith, just like they drew it up. And that would set up a Jacksonville field goal. So the Bengals are down 30 to 20 in the fourth. Blake's pass, Hail Mary, tipped into the hands of Pickens. His third touchdown of the game, Bengals down three. What are you supposed to do, Tom? You want to knock it down. They didn't knock it down. So it's a touchdown, down three. Bengals try the onside kick. Oh, my goodness. Johnson kicked the onside kick we measured, 21 yards. <laughs> Bruce Coughlin says, we got some problems with that. As Jacksonville wins 30 to 27, the Jags win back-to-back -back games for the first time all season. They beat the Bengals for the first time in four tries. The leader in the NFL in passing yardage coming in, Brunel throws for 356 yards. Mike Hollis sets a team record, five field goals for Jacksonville. Chris, Jacksonville finishing up against Houston, Seattle, and Atlanta could run the table. If they do that, they'll finish with nine wins, and that would be quite a year for just a second-year team. Now, people aren't paying attention to what Mark Brunel has done this year. He's exciting to watch. He's a tough kid, and he's delivered. Delivered big time. All right, Billy. Well, two teams that we're not supposed to say this, but frankly, we like. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Carolina Panthers. Two teams that know something about defense. All excited for the Buccaneers. Seven straight games, they've allowed 17 points or less on defense. But in Carolina, they ran into a team that's been doing this defensively better than them all year and has kind of gotten this down and some more. Forget Lambeau Field. Forget Mile High Stadium for home field advantage. There is no home field tougher this year than the frozen tundra of Erickson Stadium. <laughs> the brand new stadium knows defense in Charlotte, even in the rain. Second quarter, 3 nothing Panthers. Toys in the attic. Cook. <laughs> Forces Trent Dilfer on the blitz. That's a fumble. Sean King is king for a day. Touchdown, 10 nothing Panthers. Yeah, and Cook does a great job of selling Trent Dilfer on the fact that he's on the slot receiver. He comes late. Trent Dilfer turns his head, knocks the ball out, and we don't want to minimize a defensive lineman pick up the ball and not falling on it. Great grab by Sean King and gets into the end zone. More Panther defense. They spent big bucks for this guy, Eric Davis. Dilford telegraph. Davis is there. He could go all the... Well, Dilford does hustle and make the play and knock him out of bounds. Four interceptions last five game for Davis. Sets up a Howard Griffin touchdown at 17 nothing Panthers in the fourth. Dilford under pressure hit. And Sean King is there again. Lamar Lathan with the hit. That would set up Anthony Johnson. What a job he's done filling in for Bianca Batuka. Johnson 
into the end zone, 25 yards, and a big block by Greg Skrepinak you saw there. So finally, that 17-point skein has ended. 24 seconds left. Carolina with a shutout shot. Third down, Eric Grant is stopped by Sean King. And the Panther defense, rather than get caught, Moving around, they call a timeout. How bad do they want the shutout? Tom, you play defense, you know that they want the shutout. Carlton Bailey fires up the crowd. Eric Davis knocks down the ball. And the first shutout in team history. In my mind, Brett Maxey and company are going to Carolina. The Panthers, 24-0 winners over the Buccaneers. They are now 6-0 at home. In the second half at home, they've outscored opponents 76-10. And Tommy, one other little note, because we got other things here. Just to show you all the little things that they do, there's a little known stat. It's the 17th straight game. That Carolina has gotten less penalties mm. than their opponents. That's an NFL record. The record was set back in the fight. I know that's not a big deal, but yet another little thing that they do well. Well, and I think that when we look at this ball club, certainly built for success on both sides of the football, but defensively, you have good cover corners, you have outstanding rush people, you have people who stay on sides. They're good, solid tacklers. They get the head out in front. And I think that certainly as you look at this ball club today on the offensive side of the ball, no sacks. They protected their quarterback. What they ask of Kerry Collins is, is allow our defense to play the game, give us some opportunities to win with turnovers, and you don't lose the game and they're doing a great job of it and the thing that we know right now is no one wants to go to Erickson Stadium no uh, during the playoffs and have to play this football team well, they still have a chance to catch the 49ers you know in the <laughs> NFC West who they play out there next week uh, five sacks 13 times they knock down Dilfer and uh, you know ever since they put those boomer masks up on that ESPN game you knew they were going That's places right. it, it was it was one of those things all right when we return on this edition of the NFL prime time Giants and Eagles. Giants had the big upset last week. The Eagles were upset with the way they've been playing. What happened? Boomer Esiason. Nobody's been hotter than him. But he went to Minnesota where it's cold. Drew Bledsoe, will he have the hot hand out at San Diego? It's the Patriots and the Chargers. Big game in the AFC playoff race coming up after NFL prime time. Philadelphia Eagles have lost three straight games. The New York Giants upset the Cowboys last week. So a change in the balance of power in the NFC East. As the McKenzie brothers once said, slow down, eh? Here we go at the vet. Ty Detmer. Well, he lost some games after he was so impressive when he first uh, became a starter. Fumbles the snap and the Giants recover. Weather playing a factor early. Second play from scrimmage. Ray Farmer in the Dell. Makes the play. Intercepts his fellow Duke man. On the pass, Eagles get the ball, but Mark, what do you say? He coughs it back. Charles, where there's a will, there's a way. Recovers for the Giants. But look at Dave Brown. Hit by Ray Farmer again. William Fuller rush, man, falls on the ball. Each team, two turnovers in the first quarter. As sloppy as the first quarter was, Ty Detmer settled down. Because he had Ricky running Waters. On a rainy day, you want to go to Waters. 36 yard over the middle. And it leads to Detmer. And this is a well-done play, Tom, because he goes to Jason Dunn. 15 yards, well done, touchdown, 10-0 Eagles. More in the dead murder, Irving Fryer. 20-yard touchdown, second quarter, 17-0. Philadelphia. Now watch the feel by Detmer here. Yeah, he doesn't have the nervous feet. He does a nice job of stepping up, keeps his head up. Nice delivery of the football. 22 yards to Mark Shea, first down. Third and goal from the two. Detmer to Chris T. Jones. It's a touchdown and a basket on the same play. It's a dunk. 24-0 at the half. And Tom, the Eagles, what are they doing here? Well, the crossing patterns underneath. And we're going to see Say outside, T. Jones, uh, inside, and Jones outside. You see the nice underneath pattern and the mix-up in coverage from the Giants. Detmer, 17 of 19 for 211 in the first half. Meanwhile, Eagles defense. Tyrone Wheatley, guess who's there? It's his Ray Farmer in the Dell. Unbelievable. Mike Mamula eventually falls on the football. And Tommy, a lot of this for Dave Brown. Well, and Dave Brown, more experienced, but not quite the feel of the pocket that Detmer has. And then Kevin Alexander really hurts his quarterback. Well, right there, you see the receiver actually allows the ball to go by. He should have turned into a defender and tried to knock the ball away from Benson. Eagles defense, uh, five sacks, forced four turnovers, gave uh, Dan Reeves and the Giants only 131 yards, and that look, you you know that look, Tom. I see it. <laughs> He's not pleased. Another 24-0 whitewash. So we had two games today by exactly uh, the same count.
So an impressive job by the Philadelphia Eagles who snapped that three-game losing streak. They, Washington, and Dallas are all 8-5 and five with three games to go in the Torah NFC East. Three touchdown passes for Detmer, who threw for almost 300 yards. Waters combined over 160, over 170 yards running and catching. All right. Cardinals and the Vikings. Anybody hotter than Boomer or Sias in the last few weeks? Answer, nobody. Could the Cards at 6-6 six and six win their fourth straight? Very quickly, we got the answer. No. Corey <laughs> Fuller picked it off his third pick of the season. Certainly, Boomer would shake that off. So, very quickly, we got the answer. No, he wouldn't. Robert Griffith steps in front of the intended receiver. But at this point, the Cards have only allowed field goals, and it's 6 nothing. Second quarter, third and three for the Vikes. Brad Johnson fools the Cards, keeps himself first down. Second, uh, same drive, second and 15, Johnson throws it to Amp Lee. Watch Randall McDaniel, boom, right there with the block. Amp Lee, he can cut so well. Touchdown, 13 nothing. the Vikes. Third and goal, Boomer is sacked by Martin Harrison. Force a field goal, 13-3 at the half. Vikings would fall into six and six, get moving. Brad Johnson, Jake Reed, 40 yard. Touchdown, 20 to three, Vikes. Cards trying anything at this point. And watch the fake punt to Ronald McKinnon, but if you if you snap it to the up man, why are you faking a handoff? Run with it! Well, I think you're exactly right, Chris. The the fake is in the sense that you're snapping the ball to the up back. When you fake the ball, you draw the defense, and you saw right there what drawing the defense did for the Cardinals. Good idea by the Cards on paper. John Randall, boy, he is fast. Gets a Siasen's hand. The Vikings recover the football. Boomer with good numbers because they scored some late, but they were out of this game by the fourth quarter. Who was in it? Brad Johnson to Chris Carter. All he does? Gets touchdown. Four-yard touchdown. 34-3 Vikes at this point. Four touchdown passes for Johnson. Now three and two as a starter. Want to watch the effort in a game that's lost by Larry self-centers. Boom, boom, boom. Nice play. Nine yards, 34 to 10. Randall McDaniel with a, with a pretty good block. Where were the cards on this play? Well, no, nowhere to be seen outside. Leroy Hoard, a good game. And the Vikings kind of shake, rattle, and roll. They shake the rust off. They've actually now won two out of their last three. And they went up by the count of 41 to 17. Uh, Hoard had 94 yards. And it appears that even though they've made a good run, barring a major finish, the Cards, for the 20th straight non-strike season, <laughs> just, just might miss the playoffs. And, Tommy, the Vikings looking like the Vikings of September who went 4-0. Well, the Vikings of September had Robert Smith in the lineup, and I think this is a ball club that went almost two months without the ability to run the football. They went through one three-game stretch where they had 79 yards rushing. Now they have Leroy Horde. He puts up almost 100 yards today. Now you start incorporating all the skilled people, the Jake Reeds, the Chris Carters. All of a sudden, even Brad Smith looks very capable if you have support of a running game. Well, so the Vikings feeling that right now they're on the outside looking in, but getting over 500. They're the seventh team now in the NFC playoff race to get over 500, and six will make it, so they jump back into the fray. Let's go inside the numbers, and you'll see why the Eagles swept the Giants this year. 19-10 in the first game, 24-0 now. 1910 Fruit Gum Company. Well, they're all over Dave Brown today as they were earlier in the year. Today, the Giants had 131 yards and nine first downs. First game, they had 150 yards and nine first downs. So, 281 yards in two games against an opponent. Not going to get it done. They got sacked 13 times. They didn't score an offensive touchdown. Eagles two, Giants nothing. Inside the Numbers is brought to you by Visa, the preferred card of the NFL. It's everywhere you want to be. When we return, boy, the Ravens slash Browns never do anything against the Steelers. That's why they play the game. And the Bills and the Colts. A lot of familiar names you don't know in the game. Paul Justin said a little familiar name, Bruce Smith. Special financing Hookie now available. Where the Lao Lao is the cow cup. Here's Bledsoe. Incomplete. Oh, ouch. Holy cow. Bledsoe. Nothing but bullets. It's New England at San Diego on ESPN Sunday Night NFL. <laughs> Junior Seau, perennial pro bowler for the Bolts. 
Bolts, Pats, and a good game. Top of the hour on ESPN's Sunday Night Football. It's the Steelers and the Ravens in Baltimore. There's a rainy day in Baltimore. It's raining all over the world. Jermaine Lewis takes the punt. He wants to go down the right sideline between raindrops. Dante Jones pulls him down. It's a bubble. Steelers feel they recover for a touchback for Tom. What happened? Good call by the official right there. You can see Lewis's knee was down before he lost the ball. The Ravens would maintain possession right there. Here's why they drafted Jonathan Ogden in the first round so we can catch <laughs> touchdowns. Vinny to Ogden, all those tricky Ravens. 7-0 Baltimore. Testaverde to Derek Alexander. What a day he had, shaking Rod Woodson. Bad tackling all day by the normally sure-handed Steelers on defense, 52 yards. Drive would stall. Here, Alexander makes a break to the outside, and Testaverde will find it. 24 yards, look at the adjustment, and Vinny reads him, it's a touchdown. 14-10, quote the Ravens, they have a four-point lead. Then Testaverde to Alexander, it's a great catch, but it's a fumble. Steelers recover, but again, Tom, the official's on the spot. Yeah, they were. Willie Williams, good coverage. Alexander makes the catch right there, and the ground causes the fumble. Ball's down right there. Boy, Alexander, 7 for 198. Later in the drive, Ernest Biner, 7 yards, touchdown. Boy, he has tasted some frustration over the years against the Steelers. 21 to 10, Ravens. Mike Tomzak to Andre Battle of Hastings, 5 yards out. Third quarter, 24-17. Bill Cowher says, you know what? I used to have Bam Morris. I used to have Eric Green. They left for legitimate reasons, but oh my goodness, I have to watch this. Bam, 11 yards. Bam Morris bagging another first down, rumbles for 14 yards. He had 28 carries for 100 yards on the day. And that results in Testaverde. Yeah, look at Bam, he's fired up. Then you think Eric Green wants to catch the touchdown against his ex-mates? Tom, watch. Eric Green says, here's a touchdown, and here I am. You got rid of me, didn't you? You got, you got rid of me, didn't you? You got rid of me, didn't you? Yeah. Yuck, 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 yuck. And so the Ravens snap a Ravens slash Browns snap a seven-game losing streak to the Steelers. They beat them handily by the count of 31-17. Dropped the Steelers to 9-4. We told you the Steelers gave up 198 yards receiving to Alexander. They'd given up only 186 yards a game passing all year as a team. And credit Vinny, who's had trouble against this ball club. The early INT, he follows that up with three touchdown passes. You proclaim him a pro bowler, he struggles. You proclaim he's going to have trouble, he does well. Yeah, I know. Yeah, get on the right page. Will you, Tom? <laughs> All right, so the Steelers lose. That might open the door in some ways for the Buffalo Bills, who are looking for that number two seed in the AFC. Well, in week six, with Todd Collins at quarterback, the Bills went to overtime against the Indianapolis Colts. Week 14, with Todd Collins at quarterback, the Bills go to overtime against the Indianapolis Colts. We have a saying around here, one is an accident, two is a trend. Here we go. We've seen this before. Here we go. And Jim Kelly and Jim Harbaugh both were sitting. You get Todd Collins against Paul Justin. Thurman Thomas also out of the lineup today for the Bills, among other players. But Collins goes to Kelly's old rival, Andre Reid. Where was it? Damon Watts makes the pick on the poorly thrown ball. And Watts is a 100-watt bowl. His first pick of the year. Ensuing Colts possession. My goodness. Marshall Falk toes up. He was good receiving the ball today, 12 yards on the screen. Nine plays later, the always exciting one-yard run. Touchdown, Marshall Falk, 7-0 Colts. Yeah, and Bruce M Smith, what a big day he had. Here we're going to see him the first time lined up inside, gets through right on top of Paul Justin right there, forces the incompletion, and then against the running game, just as effective again, slanting to the inside and dropping Falk for a big loss. Second quarter, still 7-0 Colts. Collins figures, well, I better throw this ball early. To Quinn early. He makes the catch. The defense is late. They rule they never hit him. It's 95 yards. The old Bills record, Jack Kemp to Glenn Bass in the 60s. 95 yards, a new team record. Yeah, and you see right there, he should have been called down. The touch was made after the catch, but that's a bang-bang play for the official. All right, so the Bills had a field goal after the touch, and it's 10-7 at the half, Buffalo. Third quarter, Paul Justin, the clip totally gross. 19 <laughs> tough yards. Look at him pull over the Bills. Short. Then Bruce Smith, though, did I say tough? Yeah, here's a sack on Paul Justin. Then on a field goal attempt by Kerry Blanchard, look at Smith's hand get up there. What does he do? He knocks it down, Tom. 
But then a big play defensively by the Bills. Yeah, watch Schulte here as Dawkins makes this catch, starts to split the defense, and right there, that's a touchdown saving tackle. So it saved the touchdown, only allowed a field goal by Blanchard, 25 yards, we're tied at 10. 44 seconds left in regulation. Ellis Johnson, he stuffs Derek Holmes in the backfield, almost a safety. Yeah, up out on the two-yard line, tried to throw him back into the end zone for a safety. Now we go to overtime. Bills third and one, but Derek Holmes stuffed by ESPN's Trev Alberts and Tony Bennett and forces a punt. On the next Colt possession, big play here. Justin to Aaron Beetle Bailey. Nice pass down to the 33-yard line. Bills catch uh, fought behind the line of scrimmage, forcing a 49-yard field goal. It's like a Jeff Blake pass. It's out of the screen, but it's good by Blanchard. And the Colts this time, they were 4-0 stumbling, but they keep their playoff hopes alive. They're back over 507-6, and, and the Bills fall to 9-4, 13-10. The Indianapolis Colts at Blanchard's field goal, by the way, gives them 31 on the year, breaking the old Colt record. Uh, and that was set back at the Baltimore Colts in 1983 by kicking Raul Alegre. So uh, the Colts back in it, and the Bills suffered a defeat that they did not want. Now, obviously, Tommy, the Bills and the Colts, of course, can plead this all year because they have really been decimated by injury. But no Jim Kelly, no Thurman Thomas Holmes at over 90 yards right, rushing the ball. Right. No Bryce Pop, no Steve Tasker. And you saw their, their uh, what happened. You, you, you take four of your key 22 personnel out of your lineup, and then I think you add Todd Collins. We've seen Collins play better once he's been into the lineup and had a chance to get some reps in game situations. Today, he looked a little bit rusty. I think you combine that with the people missing from that lineup. It was a little bit too much for the Bills on the road. Well, the Bills, of course, are still worrying about their division, but right now, that number two seed, we talk about that because Denver's got one. That two seed, you get that by Tom, and then a home game. That's right. They Pittsburgh's still the upper hand on Buffalo or whoever at the East at this point. By the way, one other steal in North Carnell Lake out two to three weeks with a sprained MCL. All right. As we roll on, we got a late highlight. Dan Marino going out west. Tough sledding against their 80s. Bears in pack. Brett Favre and company took a while for them to get going. The oldest rivalry in football. Curtis Martin and Tony Martin. They'll be on uh, front and center at the top of the hour. Well, the Green Bay Packers have withstood their second three-game road trip, which is very tough. No one can ever remember that happening in the NFL since the days of, like, Ernie Nevers and the Duluth Eskimos. Three of the last four games, though, for the Pack are at home. Is there any better way to return home than to renew the oldest rivalry in football, the 153rd meeting between the Pack and the Chicago Bears, and play it, ready, all together now, on the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. And here you go, a little snow, a little rain, a little tundra. It's football in Green Bay in December. The pack, Antonio Freeman, is back with a cast on his, uh, on his left arm, but he's back, but it would cause him trouble. Well, troubling start right there. He had a problem holding on to the football. He fumbled that one right there, but the Packers would recover it. Fourth and two for the Bears, and Dave Craig with a quick pass to Michael Timpson. Dave wants that happy in a scoreless game. Fourth and one with under two minutes to go in the first half. Wants to fake. Dave Craig, no. I'm not taking it. Throws to Bobby Ingram, and Ingram not only makes the first down, it's a touch. That's a great play by Craig and the Bears. All those sneaky Chicago Bears. Dave Craig here selling the sneak. Ingram slides Sliding out into the flat. You can use that once a year, Chris. I like the play calling by Wanstead every now and then, but I'll tell you what, after that touchdown, the Packers woke up. Fred Favre to Freeman, no problem with the cast, 29 yards. And then what a Walt Harris bit here, didn't well, he? Well, you see Walt Harris with his head in the backfield. That's why he bites on the fake and allows Freeman to get behind him for a big game. So shut out for the first uh, 28 minutes of the first half. It's Favre to one oh, and get Jackson. Let me tell you about a touchdown. Is it a yeah, Yes, it's a touchdown, Fred. We're tied at seven. <laughs> Third quarter, about six minutes to go. The Bears punt returned by Desmond Howard. He's at the 50, and he could go all the way. 75 yards. Strike the pose. You know what's happening as the pack leads 14-7. Up, up, and away into the stands. After the Bears kick a field goal 14-10, it's Dorsey Levin. Dorsey with some swing music for 15 yards. Then far to Freeman on the left side. 14 yards for Freeman. Welcome back. Ten catches, a buck 56. Third and one on the same drive now in the fourth quarter. Again, it's Dorsey Levins with more swing music. 24-yard run. Pack's longest run of the season. Second and three on the 10. Levins swings into the end zone. 
21-10. Come on now. Come on. Let me take a flying leap. Able to leap tall buildings with a single bound. Nice leap by Dorsey Levin. Yeah, the Bears next possession. Dave Craig. Here's what the Packers defense did all year. Eugene Robinson from Hartford, Connecticut. Makes the pick his 47th interception. He's the active leader. Packers keep it on the ground. 33 turnovers. Most of those amassed first half of the season. Edgar Allen Paul Bennett. It's a big second half of Russia for the Pack. They got 113 yards. And the Bears defense played them very tough. Gave up only 13 in the first half. Brett Favre says, okay. He would score in a one-yard run. And the Packers beat the Bears. And the renewal of the oldest rivalry in football by the count of 28 to 17. What a game for Freeman. What a game for Desmond Howard. Their roommates, by the way, both the bullions. You know, free, like, yeah, we're going to score this week, we're going to score this yeah. week. And, you know, we, we end up doing that. I think Nolan, Coach Nolan, who's a special teams coach, had saw something uh, in their special teams because he told the units it's for the first day we started putting in the uh, the plan, we're going to score a touchdown this week. We're going to score a touchdown this week. When the score was 7-7, seven seven, I said, Des, you got to break one for me. And uh, he went out, and Desmond Howard ran the pump back. And uh, that really swung the momentum of the football game. Well, I tell you what, the Packers smiling. The Bears played them tough, as we suggested on counter, but Tommy, I've seen now in the second half, the, not a four-quarter game now, but in the second half, those signs of what we saw from the Packers the first half of the season, they're getting it back, and they play most of their remaining games at home, and that's the place to get it back. And I think the thing to remember is that the Green Bay Packers only have one objective, that is to get to New Orleans and win the Super Bowl. Now you put some wide receivers in place who can play the game. You have Freeman, you have Ryzen. They hope to get Chamura back very, very soon. But I think the thing that will concern the Packer coaching staff is the inconsistency in the running game and run defense. We certainly see them uh, in spots where they run the ball, all well second half today but we also see spots where they struggle to run the football and they struggle to stop other people but remember the Packers if they win out no matter what the 49ers anybody else yes. do they'll be home for home. the playoffs That's right last 25 games at Lambeau they're 24 and 1 when we return on NFL primetime we're going to give you some inside the numbers we're going to tell you that the pack against the Bears all wins uh, rushing a little under this today, but a buck 45 average against the rest of the NFL. They have trouble. Well, it's their ancient rivalry. You gear it up a little bit, and it is work. When we return, late games. Dolphins, days. Tim Brown up to his old tricks. And the Broncos looking for the whole ball of wax in the AFC as far as the playoff chase goes. Tony Martin, we got Bill Bixby, Ray Walston, the entire show. Sunday Night Football, the Pats and Bolts at the top of the hour. Now, we had to bring the judge back in for that. Never has so much effort been made over a Jets helmet, by the way. <laughs> when, when Dad and my brother and I used to go to the Jets games at Chase Stadium, a certain parking lot for season ticket holders, Billy, they had the Jets Parking and Chowder Society. No one ever got hurt at getting a cup of chowder. Now, Neil O'Donnell, an hour before the game, what, in the parking lot gets hurt? You know, tough to get hurt at 3 o'clock when the game starts at 4, but it was a long walk. <laughs> it was a long walk to the uh, stadium. This was supposed to be Neil O'Donnell's day. He was due back from a shoulder injury that caused him to miss the last six games, a chance to atone for his shaky play before the injury. As it turns out, O'Donnell shows he's a $25 million man with a 10-cent body this season. O'Donnell, believe it or not, hurts his calf warming up. O'Donnell carried off before the kickoff. Frank Reich would get the start. Speaking of the opening kickoff, some issues there. You know, they should have stopped right there. First quarter, 7-0 Oilers. Steve McNair starting for the injured Chris Chandler. Chris Sanders has got it. And Chris Sanders is gone. 83 yards for the touchdown. Tommy, the Oilers are up 14 0. Yeah, you're going to see the corner here. Marcus Coleman made the move. This is his first start at the cornerback position to move from free safety. Sanders, the nice, nice stop and go. And when you bite on it that hard, you're going to end up tagging the guy in the end zone. Third quarter on a third and 10. McNair scrambling for 11 yards. First down. Same drive now. McNair to Eddie George. He went over the 1,000 yard mark last week. And 36 yards on this play. Tommy, good blocking some analysis. Yeah, Brad Hopkins with a fairly dominating block on Hugh Douglas. And then you get the over-pursuit by Marvin Jones. And what a combination of speed and power Eddie George is. A rainy situation at the Meadowlands. Wayne Corbett. Whoops. Keyshawn Johnson. Whoops. Keyshawn Johnson. Whoops. Wayne Corbett. A lot of whoops. Another whoops. Rich Cotite says, you know what? It's pretty wet. Late second quarter, Jets get a break after a fumble. Frank Reich, after the turnover, would lob it into the end zone for a touchdown to Keyshawn Johnson. 
That was a lone touchdown for the Jets, and the Oilers go on to win by the final score of 35-10. to 10. The Jets 1-12 on track to do worse than last year's 3-13, which was the worst year in franchise history. Jets have lost four straight going or giving up 30 or more points in each of those games. Oilers 7-6 and six still alive for the playoffs. George 141 yards and two touchdowns in the victory. Rams and the Saints because we are a full-service operation. Lawrence Phillips, street clothes with a knee injury. First quarter, game tied at three. Banks hits Isaac Bruce. Got a big new contract during the week, and here he's going to go. But watch Fields, a linebacker. Tommy, how in the world did that happen? You know, we had a feature this morning on Countdown on watching the Jumbotron, and you can see here you can actually make use of it if you're being run down by a linebacker. But how difficult is it, is it to run, Billy, with your head up like that? Think about it. Saints down 6-3. Torrance Small. Yes, yeah, small in there. Now, Tommy, Jim Everett, he can do some things we didn't think he could do. Well, Everett with a great block here on the end of round. He gets a block on Marquez Walker. And look at him. This is not one of those typical quarterbacks falling down. He sticks his nose in there and puts him down on his back. That's a great block by Jim Everett. So the Saints are up 10-6. Now Klaus, Wilsmeyer, punting. Robert Jones rejects it. Uh, I got it. You got it. Who's got it? Uh, the Rams take over in Saints territory. Three plays later, Banks to Bruce, 10 yards and a touchdown, and the Rams go up 13 to 10. We're now in the third quarter. Everett back to pass. He goes down, and he leaves the game with blurry vision. Misses a snap for the first time all season. In comes Doug Newsmeyer. Prep Idaho. First NFL <laughs> appearance. When you're prep Idaho, this is what you can do. Scrambles. <laughs> Look at that great play to Mercury Hayes, 50 yards. Newsmeyer, yes, Newsmeyer says, you know what, I can play in the National Football League. However, Saints next possession, Newsmeyer back to pass, hit by Jones, fumble, Rams recover, Venturi, well, he is hopping mad. Four plays later, Harold Green, the one-yard touchdown, and the Rams go on to win by the final score of 26 to 10. So the Saints now have lost six in a row. They've scored 17 or fewer points in those six straight games. And the Rams pick up their first road win of the year. And Chris, if you're interested, these two teams play again in just two weeks. Well, Madden and Summerall did the game, right? Well, so and so did you. Well, so that's what is they, that? they had a short trip after Thanksgiving. Well, they're still the bus right? couldn't go that far. Yeah, well, our <laughs> bus can't go that far either. I can't wait for the rematch in that one. Rick Venturi, another rare loss. Well, two teams with uh, big-time names, magical names with less than magical seasons, the Dolphins and the Raiders. Well, one problem for Miami over the years, 0-8 lifetime at the Oakland Raiders, 0-1 at Berkeley in the early 70s, interesting going on in the stands, and 0-7 lifetime at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. Here's Al Davis firing up the Raiders fans. Jimmy Johnson. Well... Let's go. Let's get going, Dan. Tough cross-country flight after a Monday night loss. Fred Barnett, good pass, drop from Marino. Well, tell me what happened here. Well, Freddie Barnett gets his hand up, but it looks like, the, you look at the shadows right there, it looks like the sun was in his eyes. He just lost it right there at the end. He lost it in the Jumbotron. Meanwhile, the Raiders signed Rich Camarillo, many-time Pro Bowl punter, and he got hurt in the warm-up, so Billy Joe Holbert is the emergency punter. He was hanging out with Neil O'Donnell, I think. Uh, it's a uh, Holbert punted, and it's down at the six. 51 and 54 yards to punt in the game for Holbert. Tim Brown gets the end around, and Timmy, despite the fact that the Raiders uh, season not the way he and they had hoped, still playing hard. He's one of the best. Two plays later, the end around to Daryl Hobbs. He wants to throw. I can't throw. He wants, I can't throw. He wants that the plane flies over. Hey, oh my God, he completes it <laughs> to Andrew Glover, a routine seven yard play. That sets up Derek Fenner. Pitch, cut, boom, six-yard touchdown, and uh, look at Ricky Dudley. Yeah, you take a look to the right of the screen, and number 83 right there, nice kick-out block, creates a nice lane right there for Anthony Harris, the, uh, for Fenner to get into the end zone. Well, still 7-0, under two minutes to go in the half, Marino back to pass, and Terry McDaniel is there. Marino throws into double coverage. McDaniel sprints it back to the Miami 42-yard line. First time in... Uh, for Marino that he's been intercepted in his last 111 attempts. The Raiders take advantage with a minute to go in the first half. Da -da 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 -da. Jeff Hostetler, Tim Brown, the quick hitch, gone. 23-yard touchdown, 14-0, the Raiders. Second half, Dolphins need this much for a first down. That's about one. Huh. 
The Raiders, though, Kareem Abdul-Jamar rejected, rejected by Chamberlain. And then uh, ESPN's Gary Stevens can't believe it. The Dolphins uh, offensive coordinator, Tommy's old position coach in Louisville. Haas completes to Ricky Dudley on the change of the defense. And the Dolphins recover. So, Dolphins do life, down 14-0. But on the first play, boy, the Raiders have corners. Huh? McDaniel gets one. Albert Lewis gets a pick. Reno picked off three times in this game, only four times all year coming in. And then next exchange, fumble, Greg Beekert recovers. Four turnovers for Dan. 17-0 Raiders, two and a half to go. Dolphins avoid their first shutout since at Buffalo in 87. Randall Hill catches it. Onside kick, Timmy Brown knocks it in the air. Lewis Oliver is there. Brown knocks it smartly out of bounds. Raider ball to the chagrin of Jimmy Johnson. By the way, while we're talking about Timmy Brown, if the Raiders win at 17-7, both teams now at 6-7, and seven. Uh, Tim Brown returned four punts. He now has 293 punt returns in his career. That's a new NFL record for the most, breaking the old mark set by Vi Ask Vi Sikahema, who had 292. All right. Seahawks at the Broncos. Last year, the Broncos, Mile High Stadium. It was a gingerbread Mile High Stadium. To eat that for uh, Thanksgiving, well, Cortez Kennedy like to eat quarterbacks like John Elway. Second to goal from the Seattle one, Elway. Rolling out, 8-4. Shannon Sharp, touchdown, 7-0 Broncos. The Hulk, Shannon Sharp, with 10 touchdowns this season. Now tied at 7, Elway the dump underneath to Aaron Craver. Craver dashes for 29 yards, but then some concern for Mike Shanahan. Yeah, certainly John Elway, you're going to see him here pull out to his left. He's going to be chased by Michael St. Clair. He gets rid of the football, but you watch him grab that left hamstring right there near the sideline. Uh, back on November 4th against the Raiders on a Monday night, right there is when he initially injured that hamstring. It's still bothering him. Well, they have to be concerned about it, although Elway hangs in there. We saw Bill Musgrave for a while. On this drive, he keeps it himself, a two-yard run, 14-7 Broncos, but Elway on the sideline in pain and goes to the locker room. There's the locker room. You know that place, Tom. Bill Musgrave makes his contribution. The one-time Niners, Shannon, get to know him. There, Musgrave. The Joe Cap wounded duck to Ed McCaffrey for the first down. Sets up a field goal, 17-7 Broncos. Here comes Elway out of the locker room, and Tom has to keep the hammy warm. Yeah, and he's in, in front of the heater right there, but the thing is, is think about how tough he is. I don't know if this is a game that he had to finish or had to play in in the second half he did. So Elway keeping that hamstring blown by a fan. Meanwhile, Joey Galloway makes a grab, but a beautiful strip by Torrey James. And James, I said the ball, please, James, returns it to the Seattle 33-yard line. Elway return. Second and two from the Seattle 15. Watch him hobble. He scrambles. Yay! Bullet to Vaughn Hibbert, down to the four. Next play, two-step drop to Easy Ed McCaffrey. Corner of the end zone, touchdown Broncos. 250 touchdown passes for Elway in his career. Only the ninth to do that. Third quarter, Elway says, let me play some more, coach. There's this guy named Sharp that's pretty good. Right there for eight yards. And Elway over 3,000 yards passing for the 11th time. Yeah, and you think about the ability that he has now to throw the short pass. We're going to see a couple of them here. Takes a little bit off the football, makes it an easy grab for his receivers. But right now, as accurate as I've ever seen him throw. That sets up. Leading ground gainer in the NFL coming into today, Terrell Davis. Another 100-yard day for him. Watch the hole, watch the pull, and the touchdown. Five-yard touchdown run, 34-7 the Broncos. Bill Romanowski and company celebrate. Why? Not only do they win the division, oh, that's cold. But you know what? Gatorade and Rocky Mountain Oysters go pretty well. The Broncos haven't only won the division. They haven't only clinched a first-round bye. They've clinched home field for the playoffs. As long as they're in it, 34-7 over the Seahawks. By the way, um, 11 rushing touchdowns now for Terrell Davis. The Bronco franchise record set by Floyd Little, who has 12 Floyd Little from Hartford, Connecticut. There you go. You hate him, <laughs> Connecticut. You're You're right. Right. He's a Connecticut Take guy. Connecticut. <laughs> Broncos, as you well know, Tom, 8-1 and one lifetime in the playoffs at Mile High. What does this mean now? They have really a month to not well, relax. And, but... and I think that's certainly a concern for Coach Shanahan. We talked about it a little bit this morning on Countdown. Now more than a month before you play a meaningful game, and just off the top of my head, you can think of a Shannon Sharp who has bumped up, uh, John 
John Elway with the hamstring, Gary Zimmerman, who's had an arm he can barely raise above his shoulder for about the last month or so. I think it's an opportunity to get all those people healed, but I think at some point during that four-week stretch, you have to think about getting these people some live action and some game competition so that they can remain sharp for the playoffs. Well, they get live action next week at Lambeau Field yes. against the Packers. Yes. That'll be a game a lot of people hope Elway's healthy for because it's not one the Broncos want to take off. And a team that's won nine in a row, I don't think they will. Speaking of the pack, game balls. You think the guy with a cast deserves one who caught ten balls? Primetime players, Billy, some analysis. Here's what we have. My game ball goes, yes, Mother Nature. A lanky low pressure system in the east causing rain on five games. It would have been worse, but three games today, Tommy, were played in domes, and it was a good thing that we had domes. Boomer, I'm sorry, you. That's all right. I tell you what, you put a cast on, you catch 10 <laughs> balls, you caught 300 yards in, in uh, passes against the Bears. Antonio Freeman, you get my game ball. Tommy, what do you get? My game ball goes to Ray Farmer, former free safety now with the Eagles, making some offenses feel unsafe. You look at the numbers right there, outstanding day. We will be back. It's the perfect way to make a call. He told Eric Metcalf, who phoned Wisconsin, who dialed Jerry Ball and spread the word to Curtis Martin. Price Pop shared the news with Brent Jones. Last but not least was their friend Chris Carter. 1-800-COLLECT was used on all the phones, and they saved a bunch. They saved a bunch. With 1-800-COLLECT, they saved a bunch. Up to 44%. It has been harnessed, but it will never be tamed. And from the dawn of its creation... Our week 14 honor roll, first day of December, what do we have? Rushers, 100-yard rushers, Eddie George in a win for the Oilers. The rookie at 141 yards, he is impressive. Another 100-yard day for Anthony Johnson and the Panthers. Terrell Davis just keeps on trucking for the B-men. Bettis saw his 10th 100-yard game, but they lost. Ricky Waters, 100 yards in a win. Bam Moore is 100 yards against his ex-mates. 300-yard passes. Mark Brunel, 356 in the Jaggy Wires, big win. And Jeff Blake, 300 in the same game in the loss. Receivers, Derek Alexander, almost 200 yards uh, for the Ravens against the Steelers. He was Alexander's ragtime band. Jimmy Smith for the Jags. Antonio Freeman got the game ball. Charles Johnson for the Steelers. Quinn Early for the Bills in a loss. The Reverend Isaac Bruce. And also 100-yard day. Carl Slim picking three touchdowns in a loss. Joey Galloway in a loss. Chris Sanders and the Oilers win in front of that throng at the Meadowlands. And by the way, we want to give our own little game ball to the Jet fans that sat through all that in the rain and in the stuff. Jimmy Johnson, Dolphins are now 6-7 and seven after the loss. Jimmy, not pleased. Well, we're not good enough football team right now to, to overcome you know, turning the ball over four times and penalties and, and the problems that we had in the, in the game today. Um, obviously, we got to get a lot better. Well, a big day for the home teams. It's December. It's that time, isn't it, Tommy? Yeah, and, and you watch today. I think that all the home teams won, if Just I can about, remember, yeah. except for the Saints. The Saints lost at home. Now, how could they do that? And the Jets uh, lost. Yeah, how, yeah, yeah, how could they do that? Oh, well, I didn't even count. But that doesn't count. <laughs> Thanks for watching Week 14 of NFL Primetime for Tom Jackson and the Judge. Bill Pito, I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for being with us. It was an interesting ride, was it not? We have uh, Sunday Night Football. Very good game. Probably the game of the day. Bolts host the Pats. Mike, Joe, and Mark on the call. Gentlemen from the room. Chris, it's an electric atmosphere tonight in San Diego as the Patriots and Chargers turn up the heat for the December run to the playoffs. It's the defining month of the NFL season. The stakes are higher, the intensity greater, the emotions hotter. December has arrived. The big picture is to get to the playoffs and get to the Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, you have to take care of business earlier in the year, and hopefully in December you, you have a chance, an opportunity to run for it. So has his Pats position nicely, yet there's still much work to be done. The Chargers have made their mark in this month before. Can they summon up the stamina to do it again? The Patriots and Chargers begin their run for the playoffs tonight on ESPN.